Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to talk about limits and specifically indeterminate and determinate forms. What we mean by that is determinate forms are going to be forms that we can immediately evaluate and know what they go to. Indeterminate forms, which we'll see in just a moment, are going to be ones that we don't know just by looking what happens to them, and we need to take additional steps to figure out what's going on with that limit. So let's start with some determinate forms. Here we're going to focus in on limit as x goes to a. Here a can be any constant or even positive and negative infinity. And we're going to look at things involving a quotient. So we're going to think about what's going on with the top limit and what's going on with the bottom limit. And then what do we know about that quotient? So starting with the top one here, limit as x goes to a of f of x, my numerator is going to some zero. And limit as x goes to a of g of x, my denominator is going to some c. In this case, c is any non-zero constant. When we get a quotient of zero over c in a limit, we can say that overall that limit goes to zero. Similarly, if we get a quotient of c over zero, again, c being any non-zero constant, then we can say that that is going toward some positive or negative infinity. If we get a quotient where we have some c, non-zero constant, over some limit at infinity here, then we're going towards zero. And finally, our last determinant form for our quotients, if we get some infinite value over some non-zero constant, we can say that that is going to positive or negative infinity. Now, relating those to our indeterminate forms, what if we get a quotient of zero over zero? So our limit as x goes to a of f of x is going to zero, and our limit as x goes to a of g of x is going to zero. Here, we're not sure exactly what happens. It is indeterminate, meaning we can't say, so we're going to have to take additional measures to figure it out. Similarly, if we get limit as x goes to a of f of x going to an infinite quantity and limit as x goes to a of g of x, our denominator, going to positive or negative infinity, then we don't know what's going on. We have to take additional measures or use additional information. We are familiar with some examples of these. Using our knowledge of rational functions, let's look at two limits that give us this infinity over infinity type idea and see what we can glean. So here, if we think about the limit as x goes to infinity of x, so thinking just about our numerator term here, the graph of x increases without bound, so we would say that that goes off to infinity. Here, thinking about x squared plus 4, that has up, up, end behavior. So also, the graph increases without bound as x goes to infinity. So this also goes to some positive infinity. So here we see that indeterminate form, but knowing what we do about rational functions and their limits as x goes to infinity, if we look at the highest powers in the numerator and the denominator, since this is bottom heavy, we know that it has a horizontal asymptote or long run behavior of zero. So this limit is zero. Looking at this very similar but slightly different limit here, the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared over x squared plus four. For similar reasons to above, limit as x goes to infinity of x squared goes off to positive infinity, and so does the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared plus 4. So we see that same indeterminate form, but once again looking at our highest power in the numerator and the denominator, here because we have the same degree, we look at our ratio of lead coefficients, in this case 1 over 1 or 1. So these are just two examples of limits that result in that infinity over infinity indeterminate form but come out completely different. So we're going to have to look at what happens when we get these, what if they're not a rational function, what do we do? Before we get to that answer, there are a few other types of determinate and indeterminate forms, so let's look through those. Our next group has to do with multiplying or adding infinite values. So here at the beginning, if we take the limit as x goes to some constant of h of x, and that results in some quantity that goes off to a positive or negative infinity times 
another quantity that goes off to a positive or negative infinity. We can understand that. That's two infinite quantities multiplied together, so that goes off to another infinite quantity. If we have the limit as x goes to a of our h of x, and that results in a positively infinite quantity adding with another positively infinite quantity, those two are both positive, and we can think of them as pushing in the same direction, so they're both pushing towards a positively infinite quantity. So that's determinant. And if you kind of flip that around, if we have a negatively infinite quantity added with another negatively infinite quantity, then those are again pushing in the same direction towards a negatively infinite quantity. Now for our indeterminate forms of that type, we're not sure what's happening. We need to do some more investigation if our limit results in something approaching zero being multiplied with something approaching an infinite quantity. We don't know what's going on there. We don't know which is more powerful. The other version would be the limit as x goes to a of h of x resulting in an infinite quantity minus an infinite quantity. So we don't know if these are the same size of infinity, which is bigger, which is pulling more, so more investigation is necessary. Our final group of determinate and indeterminate forms have to do with exponential. If we get the limit as x goes to a of h of x, and that results in something smaller than one, but close to one, uh, for example, like 0.9 raised to the infinite power, Anything smaller than 1 raised to a larger and larger power is going to get smaller and smaller and therefore go towards 0. If we flip that around and we get something slightly larger than 1 and we raise that to an infinite power, that's going to grow and grow without bound or go off to infinity. So smaller than 1 or larger than 1 raised to an infinite power, we can see what's happening with those. Also, if we get a positive or negative infinite quantity raised to some constant power, so here this c is holding the place of a constant, then that is just going to be pushed off towards some positive or negative infinity. And then our last determinant form, of course, is if we have 0 raised to a constant power, then that is going to 0. Where we end up with some unknowns is what happens if we get something going towards 1, raised to something going towards infinity. Here, because we are approaching 1, we're not really sure, you know, are we in the case where it's going towards 0, or maybe going towards infinity, or maybe going towards something else entirely. We're not sure, so this is an indeterminate form. If we take something going off towards infinite quantity and raise it to something going towards a 0 power, well, we know in general most things raised to the 0 power are 1, but here, that may or may not be the case. We're not really sure. More investigation needed. And finally, if we have something going towards zero being raised to a power going towards zero, that is also going to be indeterminate. So the answer to what do we do about all these indeterminate forms, how do we figure out what's happening, they all actually share a pretty basic answer, which is called L'Hopital's Rule. To hear more about that rule and see how it works for each of these cases, catch us in our next video.